All right, so here we are with our old line, as you can see here. We've got it laid out in a nice area we can work, and what we're going to do is replicate every single one of those bends. Now, the hardest part to doing this is that you have to think three-dimensionally. This pattern indicates two-dimensional thinking. But what that essentially means is you're not just bending something, oh, I got to bend it uh, 90 degrees or 45 degrees, but you have to bend it at the correct rotational plane of this line. So as you look down the side of it, you'll see, for instance, this bend is not at the same angle as this bend. This bend shoots out this way, whereas this bend shoots that way. So you need to take that into account as you're going, and that can make this, frankly, a little mentally taxing as you're doing it, and, uh, well, you can screw it up quite a bit too. So what I'd recommend is, uh, and I usually don't use this, but uh, this is what pretty much everyone uses because it's easier. I've often, as you've seen in some other videos, uh, uh, our Fox Body video, I did it with 3 8 line. I used the PVF coated uh, steel line. It's the green coated stuff. And man, bending that stuff, it takes some effort. And it kinks easily, you can screw it up, it, you can't really bend it back. Like, so you get kind of like one or two shots at the most on your bends depending on how aggressive the bend is, sometimes only one shot. Sometimes you mess that up. Nickel copper line, which is what this is, is a little bit more forgiving and it's a little more easy to bend. And of course, any line at 3 16 is fairly easy to bend anyway. Now you're gonna wanna uncoil this. This is a 25 foot roll, so hopefully we have enough for two in case we mess up, but more than likely we only have enough for one. Now if I completely royally mess it up, I do have a roll of 3 16 PVF coated steel that I can do as a backup, but I'm gonna hope I don't screw it up. Now you're gonna need that, but you're also gonna need one of these. This is our tube bending and flaring kit. And uh, we've assembled this over the years. And if you live in an area where brake lines can be problematic or any line in general, any hard line that you're gonna need to do, well, you're gonna to wanna to build one of these boxes over time. And uh, one way to do it, you, got, you do some work for someone, have them buy some of these fittings, you fix their car, you keep the fittings. Pretty good way to go. So we've got some metric brake line fittings here. Uh, these are all the ones that we just showed you on the car. This is our M12 uh, 1.0 DIN bubble flare fitting. And we've got some SAE fittings over here. And I think uh, we're looking at like a 3 8 uh, 20 probably, but I'll double check that fitting um, when we get to it. But we got those there. But inside of here, just to show you this kit, I've got a whole bunch of different types of fittings that I've collected over the years. Um, some of them bigger than others. Here's a 3 16 tube line, uh, but it's a 7 16 24 inverted flare. I've got some barb fittings. Here's some union. So here's a 3 16 inverted flare. Here's a bag of randoms leftovers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. That's kind of what I think this one was too. So it's a 3 16 yeah, th uh, th 3 16 tube side, a 3 8 24. So that should be what we're looking at. So this should be a 3 8 24 union. It just says 3 16 but it's for 3 16 line. So this would be what you were using if you split it in half. You'd use one of these unions and you would flare your brake line around here, and then you'd go ahead and screw that in and tighten it up. Now, when you do the lines, something that's very important, something they don't really show you, and hopefully this is easy to show you on camera here as I talk through it, is, um, and I used to be guilty of doing this because I'm dumb and I learn like everyone else. So years ago, what I used to do is I would even, I knew I didn't have to do it, but I would do it anyway. I would put like Teflon sealing paste or, or tape on these and go, well, I just don't want it to leak. Well, don't do that on a flare fitting. There's no need. It's not gonna hurt anything necessarily, unless you're sloppy and you get Teflon tape inside the actual hole, but it's just unnecessary. If you do the flare correctly, a nice double flare, it actually seals on the flare surface, not on the threads. The threads are a clamping force, not a sealing mechanism. So on a flared fitting, there's no need to Teflon up your threads. Um, so just something to bear in mind because underneath we've got a couple of different tools. This tool right here is pretty cool. I haven't even used it as you can see because I usually pull the lines out, but I picked this up 
in case I need to use it. There's many times where you, like I said, you're just sectioning a line. Maybe you want to get something back on the road really quick. Um, this is the tool that you want. This is going to be a high quality clamping tool uh, or a high quality flaring tool that really clamps the line and lets you do a really high quality flare on the vehicle. So cut the line nice and straight, deburr it, use this tool to flare it. We're not going to use that one today. I've also got some of these old school ones, which uh, I hate to open this and have it fly everywhere. Here, this one's in a blow molded case. Here's a Summit Racing one. And that's one of these. You've probably seen these all the time. This is usually what you rent at the store. And uh, these come with little dies, and these will do a double flare. Now, on 3 16 nickel copper, this will work no problem. You'll get a nice flare out of this. And there's guides online for how to do these and how to use them properly that you can find. Basically, you clamp the line in here and you do it. Now, what I found on thicker line, doing a double flare in these, you can hardly clamp this thing enough, even put it in a vise and the line slips and then your flare is questionable. Um, so, hey, I've used these just fine. Like I said, 3 16 uh, nickel copper, probably no problem. You try to do quarter inch steel, good luck. Try to do stainless in one of these, you can maybe do a single flare if you're lucky. Plus, these are only set up for a specific type. I think the 45 degree or 47 degree, I always forget. There's all kinds of hydraulic people out there that know this is a double flare, a certain size. Um, and that's what we'll show you next, because you have this. See, this right here is a die set for my Eastwood tool. This is a 37 AN fitting or JIC die set that does a 37 degree flare. But the tool specifically that I'm talking about here, and Eastwood makes this one, but you can buy a lot of others. There's others out there, but I love this one. This one has been wonderful. Here are all of your dies. This is a vice mounted flaring tool, which I think you've seen us use before. And this gives you four, yep, 45 degree flares, um, double flaring tool, no problem. Lots of different line sizes. This one goes up to three eighths. It also does um, metric line, 4.7 millimeter, et cetera. This thing is awesome. I double flared that heavy duty 3.8 steel tubing with this and it was like nothing. This thing is my, one of my favorite tools and I picked up the die set for the 37 degree. So you need a good flaring tool. I would highly recommend the Eastwood one if you want something nice and simple for a one-time job that you can then use later. Even though I haven't used this, it's a very similar design and it has really good reviews. This should work really well. And if you go rent some at the auto parts store, you'll probably end up with one of these. And for the job we're doing today, it'd, it'd probably work. Another thing you're gonna want is pick up one of these. I don't even know what brand this is. This might just be a simple Harbor Freight one, but this is a little tubing cutter. And this will help you make really nice straight tubing cuts. Um, you could use a hacksaw to cut this stuff, but a lot of times you end up making a slight angle with the hacksaw. This will let you make a really nice straight cut, which will make a better flare. So these are very inexpensive, little tubing cutter. Get yourself a tubing cutter. You're also going to need, you're also going to need some benders. And I've got a couple benders here. Um, this one I've had for many years and it works well. You put the tube in and then as you bend it, you bend it to a certain degree. So if you mark your, you know, use a degree finder on your old one, you can kind of match it up. This one is a little heavier duty, but similar principle. Um, this one works a lot better with heavier line. It just gives you more torque and leverage. I forget who makes this one. This one might be an Eastwood one, but it doesn't have any markings on it. And I do have one of these, which is, uh, uh, this is Eastwood branded. This is a little mini tubing bender. If you want to make adjustments on the car, you can do slight things here. But what I found is that you have to be careful. These will pinch the line if you're not careful. So like everything, take your time, be careful. All right, so we're going to start our bends. Um, I wish I could tell you there's a rhyme or reason to this. It's just turn your brain on, start your butt working through here, and hope for the best. Um, if you need to, use an angle finder, or you can kind of match them up. Let's go ahead and get this open. Now, you can buy tubing straighteners as well. Um, I don't have one. I usually just come along and straighten it out by hand. All right, 
So what you're going to want to do is first off, we're not putting our fittings on just yet. We're not flaring until we're done. But I'm going to leave myself quite a lot of line length on the end here. So it looks like my very first bend, regardless of what I do, is going to be a 90. So let me get my uh, angle tool if I can find it. To go find it, but the last tool you're going to want is just something like this. Um, you know, again, Harbor Freight. You don't have to spend a lot of money on something like this. You're just trying to get yourself close and you can kind of come in here and you can be like, oh, what's our angle? Oh, look, it's, it's 90. It's actually not 90. How about that? It's actually like a lot more than 90. No. Yeah, it's pretty much 90. But with this, you can then go ahead and dial in with your, your bending tool. Come along here and go, okay, well, what do I want to set this to? Okay, well, I want to go to... Like, boom, like 85-ish. 80, 85. So, this will help you out, This because this you can set your angle, and then you can kind of get to go. Now, the last thing I like to use, I just said this was the last thing, but the only other last thing I like to do is take a paint marker of some kind, and as I'm going along, because see, here our first bend, you know, we can make our bend like that, straight down, but then on our next one, we're going to want to line it up and mark here so that our top of the bend is here so we bend to the right plane. Let me try to show you that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to give ourselves whatever the length of this is, and then a couple more. We're going to give ourselves a lot of length to curl. You see we made a little mark there. And uh, what we're going to do is we know that this goes like that. So we'll keep this mark on the top, and we're going to bend that to about that 85-degree mark. And that's going to leave us with a ton of extra but we can trim that off and do our final fitment. Better to have more than less, believe me. Been there, done that. All right, let's use this one. Does this one work with 3 16 line? Yeah, look at that, all right? So, see how you can kind of rotate this? You wanna rotate it so that's on the start of that axis there. And then, of course, you bring this up top close in on it. This is a little finicky all the time. Now, like most things, when you start the roll, see where we made our mark? If we put the mark at the zero and we start bending, the, the curve is going to be like right at this 45. It's actually going to be about, you know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch further. So what we're going to do is give ourselves that amount of room, give ourselves yeah, maybe about an inch, and we'll lock that in place. See, we'll line it up, lock it in place. It's been a little while since I've done this. All right, then we'll just yank our tube down. I went way too far, by the way. All right, and we'll pull it back up. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to want to dial that in so our mark stays right where we put it. But luckily, this was our first test bend. And as you look here, don't, don't do that. What am I doing? All right. Got our first test bend, which you need a lot of room to work so you're not bending the hose around too much. All right, and if you look here, we've got our first bend pretty darn close. Now our next bend is like right here, and what did I do with my marker? Obviously, we're going to check the angle here. You know, we'll check the angle here, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and kind of clamp these in our hand at least. Line up our arc. And we're going to look at it. And we're going to... Oops, hang on. And then we're going to put a mark like this. That little cross right there. Now that means on my plane, I should make my bend going that way. 
Okay, so let's check our angle of our second bend. And that's about a 75, six, so about a 70 degree. So I think this angle is about a 70 degree angle. And uh, kind of tell that by you know, kind of getting it close like that. See, look at that. And then boom, pretty much close. I don't know why this thing doesn't have a scale on the other side because most of what I do, um, it like has a gap in scale. Like why, why? I get it, 120. Like I can subtract that from 180 and I could figure out what I'm doing. 90, okay, but that would be 90. 90 minus 180 is 90. So like, why do you have to do that? Like, let me do this. Okay, it's close to 120, but it's not quite there. So it's probably 110, that would be 70. All right, so I don't know why they couldn't just put marks here on this cheap tool. Uh, that would make my life easier because then I just know and subtract. But now, all right, anyway, 70 degrees is my bend and I want my bend to start on the top there. We're gonna try with this one again. So this is where things can get to be a pain, especially if you're trying to film. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best to get this on camera. All right, see that? We're gonna keep our bend here. I want the radius of my bend to be right about there. And I'm gonna go ahead and bend that to about 70. Probably just like that. Take a look. That's pretty close. Now, whatever we don't get that's perfectly close, this nickel copper line will let us bend the rest of the way. All right, so we're just about ready to start. We've got our tubing bender in the vise here, and we've got our two dies that we're gonna use. Well, the two halves of the dies, but we're gonna use both sides of this die. So if you look at this, which hopefully you can see on the, on the uh, one here, uh, well, we'll flip them inside out and you can kind of see there's two differences. You have your 45 degree SAE double flare and your DIN ISO flare, ISO bubble on the other side. Um, so see the little dot there? Make sure you got these lined up. Now this is the die for 3 16 or 4.75 millimeter. And uh, this would be the side you wanna do if you wanna do your uh, double flare for the one end, and then we'll flip it around to do our bubble flare on the other end. So let's start with the double flare. So we'll line that up in. Now what we're gonna wanna do is take our tube and we're gonna wanna go ahead and you can cut your zip ties if you want. I'm gonna leave these mostly connected because I find them very handy. What I'm gonna do when I reinstall this in the vehicle to give this nickel copper a little extra strength when it goes in, I'm gonna give it that. So, so we're gonna to wanna to lay this tube in like that. So it's gonna to need to be a little straighter. We might need to tweak our bend when we're done. Um, and the hardest thing is not forgetting your tube nut and the, the worst thing with these types of, of, ben, of uh, tools here is that, as you can see, your tube nut has to go far enough up in here. So if you need to bend your tube to get it on, that's fine. We can rebend it later. So this would be a little easier without the bunch of tubes that we're making here, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and lock this in place. You can see here we use this kind of operation zero here. See, look, we got our tube nut on. We didn't forget it. This is our, our SAE side. We're going to do a double flare on this one. But before we do that, let me loosen this a bit. Move this out of the way. And let me get a little bit of the goo. Thought you might want hat cam in my dirty, my messy bench. So I'm just going to use a little dielectric grease here. And uh, that should work just fine. And uh, we're gonna have operation one for our DIN, operation one for our 3 16 and operation two K. 
Okay, let's put this back on. All right, so essentially what we're going to do is use this op zero. We're going to cinch this down. That's going to level our tube right where we want it to be, which is right on the end there. We've got our dielectric grease. Now we're going to do a 45 degree double flare. So we want to do op one on 3 16 Okay, so we're going to do op one. Perfect. And we'll move to operation two for three sixteenths, one fourth, or et cetera, until it stops. And that should be a perfect flare. It's literally that simple. Look at that flare. Look at our flare nut it goes right up on it. Right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Now, in the meantime, what we're going to do, we're going to switch back to op zero. Now, we deburred these off camera. So we're going to put this in so we have our DIN flare that way and our DIN flare that way. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get this set. DIN flare, DIN flare. Op zero, snug it down, got our tube nut. We're going to do op one, the 4.7 DIN. And that should be it. Let's see if we have a, a flare. We have a bubble flare. Look at that bubble flare. And we just bring our tube nut down. There is our bubble flare put on. So now all we have to do is rebend this back down. We'll use our bending tool and uh, we'll be able to put this on the car. So aside from being a little unwieldy and looking goofy with zip ties all over it, we are about ready to finalize this and go ahead and reinstall it on the Jeep. Now, uh, as again, the zip ties and keeping this thing connected, well, it just makes it easier to lug this thing around. The nickel copper is so flexible, the original steel hose, the steel line gives it a little more strength. Now I'm gonna see if I can leave the zip ties on and feed this thing into the Jeep. Um, hopefully that's the case. I know there's some tight fits, um, but I'm hoping that'll keep me from deforming the nickel copper too much and get this thing back in. So that's not going to be an easy thing necessarily, and it's hard to verbally say how to do it. I would say you just try it and you get it to work. You probably want two people, someone up top, someone on the bottom. And uh, when things aren't going, don't just jam it and push it. Stop and figure out which way you need to twist it.